Hey, what's up, guys? It's S Fan here. Uh, there's another Classic Wild Blue Post, which I'm actually surprised about. I, I, I kind of got the vibe that there wouldn't be any more Blue Posts for a while. But uh, this one is about itemization in WoW Classic. Uh, there's been a lot of you know, speculation and stuff. We've, we've talked about progressive itemization and how there's different parts of progressive itemization. And uh, I, I haven't actually read through the post yet. Like Whenever I, I, I saw this, it was it just come out a few minutes ago. So uh, we're going to read through it together. I always think that's a little bit more fun. Uh, we'll read through it together, and then we'll talk about it, kind of give you um, instant thoughts and feedback as to what it is. So, <clears throat> Kyvax, if you will. It's been a lot of fun over the last couple of months to dive into the development of WoW Classic with the team. While trying to answer some of the many questions that have been posted here and elsewhere, looking at the plans for phase content released, unlocking dungeons and raids, and unlocking other systems, it's clear that the aim is to create a progression experience that resembles the original arc from when WoW first launched, and thinking about what belongs in each of those phases, the team's focus has always been on rewards. Developers have scoured through vendor lists and treasure tables for items that were added in patches and then added then attach them to the staged content plan. This means that if a new item was originally added to a dungeon boss's loot table with AQ, you shouldn't expect it to appear in WoW Classic until Phase 5, which is the phase that contains AQ content. Okay, so this is... We talked about this on Classic Cast yesterday. Um, we talked about it or, on, or two days ago on Classic Cast. Sorry, the Classic Cast was posted on YouTube yesterday. If you guys haven't seen that, go check it out. The premier WoW Classic podcast with myself, Tips, Stay Safe, um link or I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put a little card up there so you guys can click on the card whenever I say this but um yeah go check it out we talked about it on classic cast yesterday and kind of what we thought would happen uh, my my thought for progressive monetization and how Blizzard was probably going to treat it at this point was that they were going to release items whenever they would be released right they would put items into the game whenever they would be put into the game uh, but as far as like updating stats of the items throughout the course of vanilla throughout the course of Classic, uh, it, it was probably going to be the final version. So, uh, at, at least the first part, that's what they mentioned. Uh, along the way, we've seen many questions asking if we were also retract, re retracing the steps of incremental changes to individual items and their stats that may have occurred throughout Original WoW. Such a plan could be called progressive itemization. Here's an example of progressive itemization. The Tier 2 Warrior Helm of Wrath originally had Spirit and Agility on it, as well as Crit Chance. In Patch 1.5, the Helmet's stat budget was changed to Stamina, Strength, and Defense, along with Elemental Resistances. Then, in Patch 1.7, the amount of defense on the Helm was reduced. There was an overall defense nerf, and we'll talk about this. There was an overall defense nerf in, in Classic 2. Uh, in Patch 1.8, the 5 piece set bonus that included the Helm was fixed to work with Whirlwind, and in 1.9, it got a lot, it got a better look with an art update. Yeah, all the sets got updated in 1.9, uh, visually. While Classic will only include that last version of the item as it existed in our reference version 1.12. Of course, this raises the question, why? Uh, why differentiate between adding new items along the way and making modifications to existing items? When new items are added to loot tables, you're generally seeing a deliberate effort to provide catch-up gear and, and or to provide new goals for players who had exhausted an existing reward structure. For example, in original WoW, items were added to give players a way to quickly prepare for AQ without having to spend months in Molten Core and Blackwing Lair. We've talked about this before. Whenever they added ZG, whenever they added new items into MC, um, we'll hit on that too. Okay. Uh, the changing of existing items in patches often illustrated the original design team responded to how players played the game. <sighs> this is unfortunate. We'll talk about that too. Um, their primary goal at the time was to make the rewards more relevant and exciting. Developers realizing that Spirit probably wasn't an ideal staff for a warrior raid set helm. Raid set helm was an example of this sort of change. Many class abilities and talents evolved similarly. For example, going into patch 1.8, the game designers determined that Moon Conform would be a more compelling 31 point balanced jerk talent than the original selection of Hurricane. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, yeah, Hurricane 31 point it was pretty bad. Uh, it's important to remember that there's more to WoW Classic than a long series of changes. Even if item change could be made, and even if every class change could be progressively recreated, that would still only constitute a piece of the overall landscape of original WoW. We remember how early raid progression was punctuated by unexpected roadblocks and workarounds. As far as we know, every one of the first rag kills was only possible due to the bug that made Lava Burst temporarily stop firing after a wipe. 
Chromagus was practically unbeatable due to ignite flesh unavoidably and lethally stacking on tanks until it was discovered that Flame Gore's ramp in the lab allowed the entire raid to damage Chromagus without being exposed to his breath attacks. Cthune was infamously seen as unkillable until a hotfix in April 2006 prevented additional tentacles from spawning while he was vulnerable. Recreating and then refixing every major progression affecting bug wouldn't account for what we think matters much more, the people playing the game. There were many unknowns in original WoW. The first skills to reach Nefarian spent their initial pulls testing different ideas they had and trying to figure out what condition would get them past the first part of the fight, uh, defeating 40 Draconids. That experience can't be created, recreated, excuse me, because the, because the knowledge can't be unlearned. True. Uh, for a long time after patch 1.4 came out, Many players simply had no idea how good Obsidian Edge Blade or Aged Core Leather Gloves were. The power of weapon skill will be no surprise in WoW Classic. So rather than trying to recreate a specific experience from 2005 that can never be fully recaptured, our aim has been to accurately and fully restore the original game's mechanics and stats to their final and most polished state before the Burning Crusade. That mission has been a pillar of WoW Classic's design from its inception. This means that while content will be unlocked progressively to allow for raid for each raid tier to shine, systems such as class design, battleground mechanics, stats on existing items will all be set to their final 1.12 conditions. That should take the pressure off players to be constantly figuring out what we might do next to remain exactly in line with how the game once played out, and we can all focus a little more on community building and joining the experience together. Yeah, so here's that's basically what I thought we were they were gonna do. I, I basically thought they were gonna do this and, and I and I mentioned that on Classic Cast on the last episode of Classic Cast, like I said. Uh there's a few things that, that I should have taken pull a freaking notepad. There's a few things that we should hit on while talking about this. Um I think, first off, there's a lot of sensationalist and this happens a lot in the in, in youtube right I, I spend a lot of my time on twitch if you guys haven't seen my streams I'm, I'm doing a lot of variety in irl waiting for classic to come out i got i you know after after my youtube dmca my private server streaming ban i moved to twitch and i've, I've just been doing all kinds of random stuff but um youtube and twitch are, are different mediums and a lot of times you'll see on youtube it's a very like um there's a lot of sensationalist, like everybody makes a big deal about everything. Uh, you need to kind of have a, a, a good title that kind of captures people in. Like a lot of people say it's clickbait. There's a difference between clickbait and a good title. But that's some of that's just like the YouTube game, right? But um, I also think that like the the just like they over a lot of people overhype things and they make things a bigger deal than they are uh, i think progressive modernization is good uh, i i think overall like i would prefer to see pro, like full progressive itemization than no progressive itemization but uh i don't think of it in the same way that some people say oh this will like kill the game i, I think there's there's very few things that'll actually kill the game uh and i i think it was chronos uh I, I don't know exactly which server it was. There was a private server, I think Chronos 3, that actually did it this way. They they put in the final version of the items all the way through, and it's not like it killed the game on that server. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's just how I feel about it. Um, okay, so let's start back. I should have pulled out a notepad, like I said, to freaking write down all these things. Uh, so there's a few things that I want to hit on. So there's a few things to take away from this post uh, that, that I, I personally want to touch on. Um, one is, let's start here. The changing of existing items and patches often illustrated the original design team responding to how players played the game. So uh, we'll, we'll use Paladins as an example. You guys know me, I play Rep Paladin. I've always been about Paladins. So the original Wrath set, the original Wrath set in Vanilla WoW, or sorry, pfft, Excuse me. The original Judgment set uh, in Vanilla WoW was actually a ret set. Uh, it was a, it was a retribution set, and it was it dropped in Molten Core at first, and then they took it out, and then they put it back in for Blackwing Lair. So they had that drop in Molten Core. You could get it. They had like a chance. It was like a t one of the set bonuses was like twenty percent uh, chance on crit to get like a three hundred damage proc holy damage. So it's like they had like crit on it it had a lot of strength the stats were itemized around a paladin being on the front lines like that was their original intention for people playing paladins was the main ver the main way to play a paladin was you were on the front lines right there with the warriors and the rogues and everybody else and you were like hybrid you'd, you'd be off healing and stuff like that but you'd be on the front lines right they saw that 
because of how the game played out and the same play, the same way it played out for a lot of other hybrids is they need people to heal raids if you have 40 people in a raid then naturally how it's going to shake out is that a lot of the hybrids are going to end up healing because you know you're probably going to need you know 10 11 12 healers right for a 40 man raid and if you only have priests healing you're not going to have 10 11 12 priests you're going to want druid paladin or shaman so on um so that's just naturally how it played out. So that's whenever they started changing some of their itemization and, and Blizzard kind of was like, okay, well, players are making Paladins heal. Players are making hybrids heal. Let's kind of work more towards that. Um, so there's that. That was one. And look, it, it would be really nice. I, I, I'd even, I've even talked about it in the past. It'd be really nice if they had like true progressive itemization where like Paladins would have that original judgment set. But I don't know. I think, I think progressive itemization is important. Uh, to at least to some extent and i think putting the items in at the right time is more important like if i had to pick one or the other putting the items in at the right time if i had to rank them that is more important than updating the items progressively they're saying they're putting the items in at the right time right um whenever items are being added to the loot tables they specifically use aq like this means that when an item was originally added to a dungeon boss's loot table with AQ, you shouldn't expect it to appear in WoW Classic until Phase 5, the AQ phase. So, even something that's not AQ, specifically, but it's in the AQ patch, you're not going to see it until AQ. Um, what this means is... Whenever... I, what I'm assuming, right, I'm taking this as also the Molten Core gear... The gear in Molten Core that drops in the 1.5 patch, Onslaught Girdle, uh, Flame Guard Gauntlets, that kind of stuff, that's not going to drop, I would assume, until Phase 2, at least. I don't think they're going to put that in with a BWL patch, because of the like the, the idea when when new atoms are added to loot damage which is a deliberate effort to catch up in gear and provide new goals for players who had exhausted an existing reward structure so you see this they may have exhausted the existing rewards in phase one so in phase two you're probably going to see the molten core gear update that's what i'm taking away from that um <clears throat> so that's good I, I think i think that's cool um next up they talk about this, and this is just something else I want to touch on. And everybody says, well, okay, if they don't update the items and they have better versions of the items in at the beginning than later, then won't that make the game too easy? Isn't it too easy? Not necessarily, because whenever items get updated, they don't always get buffed. This is in patch 1.7, the amount of defense on the helmet was reduced. Not only was the in, was the amount of defense on the Wrath helmet, the tier two helmet reduced in patch 1.7, there was a 33% defense nerf for uh, across the board in patch 1.7. So they're going in to phase one with the defense nerf on everything. So it's actually going to be pretty difficult, much more difficult to get defense capped early on as a tank this is actually very interesting to me. It's going to be a lot more difficult to get defense capped. Uh, and, and what that's going to mean is that's going to be more taxing on the healers. Uh, it's going to be more taxing on the healers. Tanks are going to have to put a higher emphasis on defense gear, meaning they're probably going to do less threat per second, right? Their TPS is going to be lower. If their TPS is going to be lower, then there's a higher... There's, it's more likely that DPS is going to be threat capped. So I, I don't know. I, I'm I don't think it's a necessary. It's a thing where uh, you're necessarily going to make the game easier by having the most updated versions of items in the game from the beginning. Like certain things are going to be better. It's going to change the meta a little bit. I've talked about it before. The WoW Classic meta, the private server meta, and the vanilla meta are are all different things. The retail vanilla they're all going to be different. We, we saw it with private servers. I, I know the game was played different on private servers than it was in retail vanilla. At least that was the case for me. And you can see it now. It's going to be played a little bit different on WoW Classic than it was played on private servers, right? With WoW Classic, they want to try and take it as much as possible back to the original game. Uh, but there's going to be some things that are just different, right? One of those things that they say is just going to be different is like you can't account for people already knowing things, right? The knowledge can't be unlearned. Uh, I think, yeah, that's there, right? People know how to do stuff. Uh, but, like, when you're using people as a whole, as opposed to 
like taking people as individuals, like you still have to learn how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like the knowledge is out there. You just have to learn how to do it. You have to practice it. You might need to get some reps, maybe even wipe a few times. It's not going to be as easy as, oh, I watched a video and I went into a raid and I did it. No, like a, a video is going to help, right? But it's not going to do the fight for you. Like you're still going to have to do it yourself. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> that's pretty much how I feel about all that. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing, like whenever I went back and, and this is what a lot of people say about Vanilla WoW. It's like, oh, well, we already know everything. It's going to be boring. It's going to be too easy. Look. I went, and and a lot of you guys know my story, and 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 I'm just gonna cut it short. But when I started playing on on whenever I, I whenever I played Vanilla WoW in 2017, okay, when I played Vanilla WoW in 2017, I had more fun than I had whenever I played original Vanilla WoW from 2004 to 2006. I I actually people say, oh, it's not gonna be as fun. I had more fun because I was older. I was able to to figure stuff out more. Like I already knew a lot about what I did specifically. I knew a lot about rep paladins, and that's what made me good. But I didn't know I, I didn't know everything about everything else. You know what I mean? I was thirteen, right? Um, I genuinely think that people the second time around, this time around, are probably gonna have more fun than they had in, in the past. That's that's honestly how I feel. That's how I felt. And I think it's going to be really good. So anyway, guys, um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. Go follow me on Twitch. I just hit 100,000 follows on Twitch, and I'm almost, uh, I don't know what we're at now, but but we, we just had 100,000 follow celebration on Twitch. We're doing IRL. We're doing variety. We're waiting for WoW Classic, man. The WoW Classic waiting room, it's coming. We're going to get the beta soon. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's where we do Classic Ass Live. Um, so so very very excited about things to come follow me on twitter instagram all that stuff discord join my discord we have almost ten thousand people in my discord now it's crazy discord.gg slash tv come talk about classic come get excited come get involved in the community it's a really really good time and um i'm working on some stuff in the future too a little bit of maybe like updating the website and stuff like this um it's gonna be good so anyways guys thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys soon.